Hello and welcome to this video on a big ship. Squeeze in. Keep blowing my mind away. Spears. Wheels. Actually, this one. The wind just cut through your fingers. Or whether they simply run out of supplies. Giving you some kind of inspiration. Hamelina. 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 Okay. Yes. Hello and welcome to this very wet video from Hamelina Castle all the way in Finland outside or behind me in this very cold weather which has induced a cold in me I'll have you know so now you know the lengths to which I go to make these videos for you I'm just joking I'm thoroughly enjoying myself here is Hamelina Castle now this is the main keep that's behind me and um, it's got some rather interesting architecture which I really wanted to show you uh, from a castle construction perspective. So join me as uh, I travel around this wonderful castle with my local guide, Sara. Thank you very much for being on the show. And uh, we're going to explore this amazing Finnish castle in the rain. Okay, so now we're in the primary entrance of the keep of the castle. And what I found rather interesting was, apart from the fact that this is just a massive space, you can see that's the main door behind me. And that's the original door, by the way, by the way just this massive thick thing. But below it is a rather interesting thing. That is the well that would have given water to the castle. And I'm going to walk backwards here so I can fall down into it and become a meme. But all the way down here, oh, there we go, look at, look at how far down it goes. Now, if that isn't the entrance for an amazing adventure, I don't know what. But this well would have served as the primary entrance area into the keep. And then from here, we travel from there. We walk past the well and we come out through that entrance there and we continue deeper into the keep itself. But already, I mean, this first room, we've got windows that look like this behind me here which is where archers would have lain in wait on the other side so that they could fire arrows through into anyone trying to break in through that door. And just the, um, the stone is so solid, so robust, and it's just so, so typical of Finnish architecture to marry these wonderful old red brick stones with this intensely heavy granite uh, to create a really strong but also very beautiful um, foundation and mixture. So that's the well room of Hamelina Castle. Okay, so this is the inner quad of the keep. And as you can see, it's open to the elements behind me. It's currently undergoing renovation. Oh, thank you for dropping right on me. Um, there's this wonderful walkway that uh, just extends all the way around this keep. And of course, that gives you just such a fantastic opportunity Oh, there we go, um, to fire arrows down into anyone who's in the central quad. But, you know, what strikes me as so amazing about this space is it's not very big. I mean, I can imagine knights and soldiers, let me, let me do this for you. I can imagine knights and soldiers mustering behind me as they prepare to repel invaders. Of course, here you've got barbarians who could potentially be coming from the north. You've got Russians who could be marauding across. And of course, you've got Vikings on the other side of the lake, haven't you? Well, on the other side of the sea that could be coming through as well. So this is a mustering area. But if you look up there, if you look at those doorways, there's such a beautiful attention to detail. That's such a wonderful descriptor, isn't it? To add to your stories, to say it's a doorway, but it's inset literally three foot deep inside these um, concentric archways that have each got a different type of brickwork or a different type of stonework. And you can see directly above them, this, this here, the stones are all, uh, the bricks are all at different angles to create this wonderful sort of beveling effect. And again, an integration of the original stone plus the, uh, the uh, red brick just to create this really, really complex space that feels much more alive than just, it's a castle made out of gray stone. So the castle was built in multiple phases over a period of 700 years, starting in or around 1249 AD, when a certain Jarl moved up north into Finland and claimed this as his territory. 
Now behind me is one of the feasting halls, which uh, is deep inside the castle, as a matter of fact. I was quite surprised by that. There's no windows in here, there's no sort of ventilation, except for these strange things in the ceiling. And I'm going to move through. This is the living quarters. So this is where they would have stayed in times of trouble, in times of danger. And, and obviously they needed to heat things up. It gets to minus 30 degrees Celsius in Finland, which is pretty cold. And so they had these vents, which they put into the ceiling to allow for fires and things to burn to keep the space warm. Now, because the castle was built in three phases, that means we have three very distinct architectural styles. We've got the very grey stone, which I've already pointed out to you. We've got this red brick, which I have pointed out to you already as well. And then there's a sort of a mismatch um, of different architectural styles. As they sort of finished off the castle and brought it into alignment, I suppose, with what the current Lord uh, felt that it should be. All right, it's really dark where we are right now, but that's because we're in the dungeon area, which is actually on the second floor, which was constructed in the 13, uh, around about 1320s, 1340s. And um, the staircase above me leads to this strange light. We're going exploring, so if you don't hear back from us, you know that we're locked in someone's dungeon far, far into the hinterlands of Finland. The view outside would have been enjoyed by a person sitting here. It's unfortunately closed, so we can't make use of it, but the next time you try and sneak into a castle via the latrine, you're in for a bit of a climb, as we're now on the fourth floor. As you can hear, I'm slightly out of breath, but that is the privy, and that is the view that you would have had whilst contemplating life. In more modern times, the family's moved into a slightly nicer, little more windows kind of space where they had room to sit and play games. But again, not the biggest of windows. Nonetheless, a much prettier, happier space than deep down in the uh, 12th, uh, 1200s. Carpets would have kept the floors warm in winter, and of course the fireplace is ideal for battling those minus 30 degree winters. Wooden flooring here now, we don't need stone as we're high up in the castle. Minus the electric light, this is where the scribes were locked away inside the castle. From here, nobles Peasants, knights would come and sit with the scribes, possibly at that window, or most likely here in this little alcove, where they would dictate letters that the scribes would write for them before being dispatched by a rider to wherever they needed to go. From the guards' quarters, you would walk into this small room and then down into the dungeon. Now those stairs, if you can see them from here, are ridiculously steep. I would be worried if I was wearing chainmail to even try and get down there, let alone having prisoners of unruly intent trying to do the same thing. There possibly would have been a wooden structure to have given it a little bit more uh, strength, but generally speaking, everything here is pretty narrow. Here is the door that you would come into the castle on the second floor. On either side of the door are these large holes, into which you would have placed the wooden beam that would have kept the door from being burst inwards. Now, once that's been burst inwards, directly opposite the door, so I'm turning all the way around, directly opposite the door is this little thing. It doesn't look like much on the camera, but I can assure you it is about a metre and a half to two metres deep. And on the other side is where a crossbowman would have sat ready, or maybe two or three, to pepper anyone who was foolish enough to try and come in through this door. Really, every single access point has been designed to make it difficult for you to navigate. I just have to look at these high windows that look down onto the ground, but also the floor. It's very uneven for what you'd expect. These stones are quite rough, and some of them, as you can see here, actually stick out at quite an odd angle. 
So moving through here on speed is not going to be easy, especially if you're trying to make it up into one of the towers. This lofty hall that echoes from here to next Tuesday is the King's Hall, or the Jarl's Hall. This is where he would have sat and held court and looked after his uh, men, made judgment, and of course these beautiful, beautiful Gothic arches in the uh, vaulted ceilings just creating this acoustic sound of ultimate power. Now, rather interestingly, is if I point my camera down here. These are the original tiles, but can you see, let me move around this way, what that is in the tile? The local cat happened to wander through the clay maker, uh, the tile maker, as they were making these tiles, and managed to immortalize itself. Now, the rumor is, though, there were no cats in Finland when these tiles were being made. So they think it was the spirit or the ghost of a cat that was wandering through these halls, giving it its blessing. Fancy that, a cat in Finland. Tapestries like this give us an insight into the colors, the styles of fabric, the uh, style of the day, what men were wearing, what women were wearing, and uh, what was being served for lunch. In this case, suckling pig, I think, with uh, a bread roll on the side. How, how very Atkins of you. So a visit to a castle wouldn't be complete without trying on at least some of the armor. I have to say the helmet actually fits quite well and I have a remarkable amount of vision around me. The gauntlets I'm a little bit confused on there. Obviously you'd be wearing gloves, you'd be wearing chainmail underneath and then you'd be wearing even more armour underneath that or leather halberd, halberd, leather jerkin uh, or a gambeson depending on how rich you were. But it's actually not bad. There is one thing however. It's about 15 degrees <laughs> Celsius outside. And I can tell you, my glasses are fogging up in here. It's really, really warm in this armor. So I think it's the wool cloak, or maybe it's the metal, I don't know. But what better way to experience a castle than to wear the actual armor? And now those stairs that I spoke about. Trying to, <laughs> trying to walk down those stairs would be mission impossible. <laughs> Now, of course, that I'm outside once again, having explored the castle, it stopped raining and the sun has come out. But it makes it nonetheless impressive when you look all the way up there and consider that those windows would have been firing arrows down on anyone trying to breach the main keep once they have already, of course, made it through the walls behind me. This castle was used for more than 700 years for various things. Now, of course, it's a spectacular museum. And it just goes to show you that structures can be used and changed and altered over time so that you almost don't recognize that this was once a structure for war. Now, of course, it's a structure for learning and for history. How is that going to change structures in your game? Do you have some castles that have been converted into markets, into other places? that uh, bear testimony to older battles. Well, if you do, your campaign is certainly richer. And if you don't, you have no excuse not to add them now. Anyway, hit that like button if you want to see more of these GM out and abouts. Hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed what you saw today. And uh, remember, there are more videos coming out almost every day now on the channel. So until next time, I wish you and yours the happiest of gaming.